This month we're going on a little journey. Let's call it the hidden gem journey. We'll look for a high quality dividend growth stock among a bunch of lesser known candidates. Hi, I'm Dave Van Knapp for the Dividends and Income channel. Before we go on our little journey, please help us out by clicking the thumb up if you appreciate this content, subscribing to our channel, and ringing the bell so that you get new notifications when we put up a new video, which is about once a day these days. Thank you. Our journey starts in a dividend growth blog. If you're in that kind of blog, you know that you see posts like this one. Strings of ticker symbols that someone is recommending or describing. And if you're like me, you don't even know what some of them are. How do you know if any of them is a good idea? I decided to write some of those ticker symbols down, the ones I didn't know much about. I ended up with about 50 or 60 ticker symbols scrawled on a scratch pad. Since I'm looking for hidden gems, I used these ground rules as a first step to cut those 50 or 60 ticker symbols down. First, I wanted obscurity, meaning in this case, I looked for stocks, I singled out the ticker symbols that have fewer than 20,000 followers on Seeking Alpha. That's a well-known dividend stock and investment blog provider and uh, it may surprise you to know that some stock symbols have more than several hundred thousand followers on Seeking Alpha. Here I limited myself to the more obscure ones, i.e. the ones with 20,000 or less followers. I looked for those with a yield of 2.5% or more and a five-year dividend growth rate of 5% or more per year. Applying those three simple screens reduced the number of symbols to just nine, shown in this display, which is alphabetical. At a quick glance, some of these look pretty good. All but one has a double-digit dividend growth streak. All but two have five-year dividend growth rates of 8% or more per year. And all of them have yields well above the S&P 500's yield. But a good dividend growth investor needs to know more than a stock's yield and its recent dividend growth rate. We want to know more about company quality, dividend sustainability, and topics like that. My quick way to get insights into those things is to use what I call my quality snapshots. I'm not going to take the time here to describe them in detail in this video. I'll just say that they are built on quality ratings from sources that I trust and res respect, which are Value Line, Standard & Poor, Morningstar, and Simply Safe Dividends. What I do is I assign zero to five points on each of five factors, and that means a stock on its quality snapshot can get anywhere from zero to 25 points maximum. A score of 15 is okay, and below 15 I consider to be uninvestable. Now I'm going to scroll you the quality snapshots for the nine companies. They're still in alphabetical order, um, but just take a look at them as they scroll by and see what you think in general. Just get a general impression of what happens when we actually apply a few scoring factors to the stock list that I showed you first. Here are the quality snapshots for the nine candidates. Just check out the colors and the total scores to, out to the right in the far right column. As usual in my charts like this, green is good, yellow is okay, orange is a warning flag, and red is bad. What did you notice? The main thing is that just because a source in a blog recommends a stock or announces that he or she just bought it, that does not mean that the company is good. It may have flaws that you don't want in a holding of your own. Now with those scores in hand, let's take a look at the same table of nine stocks that I showed you earlier. This time, I've added the quality scores in the right column, and instead of being alphabetical, the chart is now in the order of the quality scores. I also color-coded everything the way that I normally score those particular factors. What do you see? I just want to point out one thing, bring it to your attention. See the red cell near the bottom for the company called MSC Industrial? It says that MSC's dividend is frozen. But the next column over says MSC has a 17-year dividend growth streak. How can both of these things be true? This is a teaching moment. Here's their dividend growth streak. Sure enough, it's 17 straight years without a break. Dividend goes up every year. But here are their last 14 quarterly payments. I've used red marks at the bottom of this to mark off the years. So the beyond the rightmost red mark is 2021. Next over is 2020, uh, 2019 before, and 2018 at the left side. What you see here is that the last two, four, six, eight, nine quarterly dividend payments from MSC Industrial have been the same amount of money, and that spans more than two years. So how could they have a 17-year dividend growth streak? The key to understanding that is to notice when they made their last increase. It was with the August payment in 2019. By doing that, 
their 2019 total was more than 2018 because they had two uh, payments at the 2018 final rate and then two payments at the new increased rate. 2020 was more than 2019 because they had four payments at that higher rate as opposed to the year before which had just two payments at that higher rate. In January 2021 is ongoing at the same rate and until the last payment of the year we don't know whether they're going to raise their uh, dividend for the whole year this year. The moral of the story is always look at a company's most recent dividend payments. Don't just rely on its dividend growth streak because those are calculated for full calendar years. So right now, that 17-year growth streak means the 17 years through the end of 2020. And as we just saw, they did pay more in 2020 than 2019, and they did pay more in 2019 than 2018. So that can fake you out. Always look for the most recent few payments to make sure that if the time of year has already come and gone when they normally raise their dividend, that in fact they've raised their dividend in the current year. All right, let's go back to our search for a hidden gem. The clear winner of this exercise is Atmos Energy, ticker symbol ATO. Here is its quality snapshot again. It's all green, which is good. It got maximum scores in two categories. Its total score is 22, which is at the top of the B range. As I divide up the scores, I figure 23 to 25 points, 25 is max, 23 to 25 is excellent. 19 to 22 is above average, and that's ATO. Atmos Energy is right at the top of that range. Just to tell you a little bit about the company, Atmos Energy is a regulated natural gas distribution, pipeline, and storage business. It's headquartered in Dallas. It operates in eight southwestern states. It has over 3 million customers. It owns more than 70,000 miles of pipelines, and it was founded in 1906. So while it might be an obscure company, it's not a small operation. It's a big deal. It has a lot of quality plus factors, and it turns out to be ranked four points higher than any other one of the stocks that we looked at in this search for a hidden gem among obscure companies. While Atmos has a modest yield 2.6%, it has a good 8% per year dividend growth rate over the last five years, and it has raised its, its dividend for 33 straight years. Its 2021 raise should be announced soon. And that's our hidden gem, Atmos Energy, ticker symbol ATO. By the way, I think that Atmos is selling for a fair price right now. Offline, I calculated its fair value and came up with $95 a share. I just looked up its price and it's selling right now at $93 a share, which is a couple bucks off. I hope that you enjoyed this approach to making sense of the blizzard of ticker symbols that you run across probably every day. I think this is a good, fairly fast way to make sense of unfamiliar tickers, and most important, to eliminate the ones that are not that good so you don't waste your time on them. And that brings us to the end of this video. Please remember to click the buttons, and I'll be back in about a week with my dividend reinvestment for September. Until then, bye everybody.